Welcome back. It's Dave Morgan here again with the final part, part three of the events of the cardiac cycle lecture. And in this little uh, sub-module, which is going to be quite short, we're going to talk about how that cardiac cycle that I just told you about is related to the elastance concepts that I told you about in the first module. And the basic conclusion of this section is going to be that heart contraction, and muscle contraction for that matter in general, is essentially an increase in the elastance of, a, of the heart or of a muscle. And that it is that increase in elastance that generates many of the changes in pressure that occur during the cardiac cycle. Okay, so let's think back to the elastance curves that I showed you in the first module. And as you may recall, the idea was that when you plot volume versus pressure in any elastic vessels, like the heart, for example, you're going to get an increase in the pressure as you add volume. Um, just as in a balloon or in any other elastic vessel, that increase in pressure is related to the elastance. The slope of this curve here is equal to the elastance of that elastic vessel. Now in diastole, we're dealing with essentially a completely relaxed ventricular muscle. It's not contracting in any way, and so it has an extremely low elastance. It's essentially a floppy elastic bag in some ways, like a balloon is, and so you can add a lot of volume to a, a diastolic ventricle and not generate a lot of pressure. You can see that the pressures over here on this axis are quite low, 10 millimeters of mercury, uh, despite the fact that you've pretty much filled up this ventricle with its maximum diastolic volume. So diastolic pressures are quite low because the diastolic ventricle is a, has a very low elastance and it expands, it's very stretchable, and so you can add a lot of volume to it without generating a lot of pressure. That is not the case, however, in systole. When the, when the heart contracts, that generates a huge change in the elastance of the ventricle. Ventricular contraction this is essentially the stiffening of the walls of the ventricle, which greatly reduces its stretchability and greatly increases its elastance. And so the relationship between volume and pressure in a contracting systolic heart is much different from that in the diastolic heart. Now you may not notice, but I've completely changed the axes on this plot relative to the, the axis on the previous slide. We're now talking about much higher pressures here, and so this diastolic curve is now flattened down and much less prominent than it was in the previous slide because this axis has changed. So in the diastolic heart, we can add a huge amount of volume, as I said, um, and generate very little pressure. However, when that, when that heart contracts maximally in the end of systole, we end up with a completely different relationship between, between volume and pressure, and that relationship shows you that the steepness of this curve is greatly increased, and if you think back to the first module, a steepness increase in that curve indicates an increase in elastance, increase in the resistance to stretch. And so now, as a result, um, we can start out, for example, what does that mean? What that means is that at a middling volume of, let's say, 75 mils of ventricular volume, in a diastolic heart, that amount of volume will only cause a few millimeters of mercury pressure. It'll only, it'll stretch the walls so, they're so stretchable that it doesn't cause much pressure. However, in a systolic heart, that same volume is going to give you much greater pressure. 150 millimeters of mercury of pressure would be generated by 75 mils in a fully contracting heart. And so this change in elastance has dramatically changed the relationship between ventricle volume and ventricle pressure. And that more or less explains the whole uh, cardiac cycle in some ways, as I'll show you in the next slide. Heart contraction is more or less a, an increase in the elastance of the ventricle. And so as the heart contracts, it starts out with this diastolic pressure volume relationship, but as it contracts, it makes its way up through a series of lines, a continuous series of lines, until at maximum contraction, it has now achieved this maximum systolic elastance. And so the heart contracts by changing this line, changing this ventricular volume pressure relationship up to a much steeper state. And then, of course, once it's complete contraction, it goes back down in the other direction during relaxation. And so those same lines, it experiences those same lines as it goes back down to diastolic um, the diastolic heart. And so heart contraction and relaxation is simply a matter of increasing and decreasing the elastance of the ventricular wall. And that, of course, has huge effects on the pressure inside the ventricle. And to illustrate that, this next slide is slightly complicated, but it more or less superimposes the pressure volume loop that I told you about in the previous module, the cardiac cycle pressure volume loop. It superimposes that loop onto this uh, onto these elastance curves that I've just plotted, because of course this, the pressure volume loop also plots volume 
versus pressure. And so you can see in green here, this pressure volume loop is now illustrating how pressure and volume change during the cardiac cycle as the elastance of that heart changes. So we start out, for example, once again in diastasis down here. Highly relaxed diastolic heart. It's filling up with the last little bit of blood until it reaches maximum volume right about there, 125 mils. Then ventricular contraction begins. And as you can see from these dashed lines, ventricular contraction results in an increase in the elastance of the heart. And so that is why, despite the fact that the volume stays the same, pressure increases. So this, this is the explanation for the increase in pressure that occurs despite the volume staying the same. The volume is constant, but the pressure increase is generated by a stiffening or an increasing elastance in the ventricular walls. And the amazing thing is that that, uh, that increase in elastance continues even after the aortic valve opens here. After the aortic valve opens, uh, of course, we're seeing a dramatic drop in the volume inside the in, the in the ventricle, but despite that decreasing volume, we're getting an increase in pressure. And that's because the, the elastance is continuing to increase along these green lines, these dashed blue lines, I should say, so that despite the fact that volume is dropping, pressure is still increasing because elastance is increasing so dramatically. Eventually, of course, the volume, the elastance can't go beyond this maximum. It reaches its maximum. And at that point, of course, the heart begins to relax and um, this aortic valve closes. And then we experience this isovolumic relaxation phase that I told you about in the previous module. And during that isovolumic contraction uh, relaxation phase, of course, during that, that phase, we're now going back down these dashed blue lines to lower elastance. And so during that phase, volume is constant, but pressure is dropping dramatically. And that's because elastance is dropping dramatically. So this is a bit of a counterintuitive situation where uh, we're experiencing huge changes in pressure despite a constant volume. And that's because the relationship between volume and pressure has changed. The elastance is changing and it's dropping. Eventually that mitral valve opens there and the atria uh, spills its contents into the ventricle during rapid filling here. And once again, during that rapid filling phase, despite the fact that we're increasing the volume of the ventricle, that ventricle is still experiencing a drop in pressure, a very slight drop in pressure, because it's still relaxing and its elastance is still decreasing. As a result, once again, we have a counterintuitive situation where volume is increasing, but pressure is dropping. And that's because elastance is dropping so much more rapidly than the volume is increasing. Until eventually, of course, we come around to the beginning again, and the whole thing happens again, and we go back through this increasing elastance that generates another pressure volume loop. And so this plot, although it's somewhat difficult to swallow at first, really explains how simply thinking about ventricular contraction as a change in elastance um, helps you understand how the heart makes its way through the pressure volume loop to generate this outflow during ventricular contraction and then inflow during ventricular relaxation. And, and so this mini module has essentially explained how we can think about heart contraction using the concepts of elastance that I told you about uh, in the first module. And by thinking about changes in elastance, you can greatly improve your understanding of how the heart contraction works and how the cardiac cycle actually works.